Today I'm going to change the oil in the Chevy. I'm not going to video change in the oil in it. I've done that in the past. You know, you do it once, you've done it a million times. Anyone can change oil, so I'm not going to video it. My video starting it, I haven't started it and God, I can't remember the last time I started. The Galaxy I had out yesterday for the first time in about four or five days. And of course it was beautiful, so I put the top down and they're predicting today to be in the mid to upper 80s and sunny too, so I left the top down figuring maybe I'll use the car. But I don't know, it kind of isn't that attractive out right now. But anyway, I'm going to get the oil changed in this, get it over in the storage unit, bring the truck back here so I can use it. And I'll still be, probably still be driving the car. I can just walk over to the place and get it if I want to take it out for a run. And uh, no big deal, but... Yeah, it's just getting that time of the year to where a lot of the car events are wrapping up and I haven't been driving either one much, so I'm just kind of going to move it out of here so I can, you know, get the truck back. Another thing, too, is I did uh, order a carburetor kit and uh, I'll probably rebuild the carburetor come spring. There's no point in doing it now, you know, it runs good, but the accelerator pump just doesn't squirt as good as it should sometimes so i'm gonna it doesn't hesitate but sometimes i have to pump it a couple times to get it to start and cold and uh, it shouldn't have to be pushed more than once and i did buy one of my uh, viewers suggested a company that makes these alcohol resistant kits and i did order one and get it and i'll probably like i say rebuild the carburetor come spring i'm not gonna now I'm going to rebuild it and then just let it sit all winter and not, not uh, drive it. And you can see I put 58 miles on it since the last video on this car. So let's uh, see what it does here. That was once to the floor. Should have started right up just without even having to crank it more than one or two revolutions. So it still needs that accelerator pump replaced but you know it it responds when you when you hit the accelerator and uh yeah that's the brake parking so i've been asked about that it's a parking brake warning light and the generator and oil light the radio warmed up and started playing but anyway i'm gonna let the engine warm up i gotta run to the post office. Maybe I'll do that after I change oil and drive it over to the storage unit. But I'm going to warm it up to get the oil changed here. Yeah, my camera battery is almost dead too because I haven't been using it. So maybe I'll get that charging. Another thing, I bought a new pneumatic grease gun in a state sale. This was new in the box. I had one my dad gave me about 30 years ago and it finally just stopped working a year or so ago so I threw it away. And then I bought a uh, lever lock for the end here, one of these. And you think I can find it anywhere? I was going to put it on, it just makes it easier to grease, but I can't find it so when I find it I'll put it on. I found it. Yeah, these things are... That way your grease doesn't go everywhere, it goes in the fitting, and uh, they're pretty good. It comes with that, that's a kit, a seal kit, so if it uh, starts leaking or doesn't work, you can reseal it. But I like these things. This is, a, I've owned, my other uh, grease gun had one, but it was uh, getting kind of crummy, so I thought well, I'll put a new one on my new grease gun, so... Anyway, here it is. Throw it on. Temperature gauge is starting to come up. The uh, thermostat, uh, I think it just opened. Yeah, I can just now feel uh, it's got a 180 thermostat. Yeah, it just opened. The air is coming out of the radiator hot. The valve covers are still not totally warm. I'm going to let it warm up a few more minutes before I drain the oil. I like to get it thoroughly up to operating temperature. It's still running on the fast idle cam. I did kick it down, you know, once it started, but that's that's as fast as I run the fast. Well, it doesn't need to run faster on this car. It doesn't stall. It, you can start it cold and go right away. 
doesn't hesitate or stall or anything. It runs quite good. Other than, like I say, the cold start takes a little bit more cranking because of the, you know, bad accelerator. You can see the smoke in that road track. Might not be enough light, but yeah, this doesn't have a PCV, it has a road draft tube. This is the oil fill, and it's just a, a vent. So when you're driving down the road, the air going under the car, that tube is cut off on a bevel and it creates a vacuum in the grant case and it intakes air and it exhausts out. Let's see if I can get the, the draft tube. The fan is blowing enough to where it's actually functioning. Anyway, I'm just gonna let it warm up good and warm. I bought a can of engine, foamy engine cleaner. I was gonna clean the engine up, but this late in the year, I'd rather leave it oily and greasy because that way over the winter it helps prevent corrosion. I usually clean the engines up in the spring because in the fall, like when I'm done driving this for the season, I'll spray all the manifolds, any anything that the paint's burned off or, you know, any of that stuff with bare metal with uh, WD-40. And then you don't get that nasty rust look on it over the winter when you get warm days after the long cold spells, you know, this thing gets all cold. And then you get a warm day and it condensates like a glass of ice water on a hot summer day. And it rusts all those bare surfaces. So if you spray them with WD-40, it prevents that. And I do the same. I spray the carburetor. You know, anything that, that could uh, corrode or rust, I give a little shot of WD-40. And then in the spring it burns off. And usually I, like I say, usually clean the, the engine and engine compartment. Usually about by the 4th of July. This year I just haven't done it. I didn't do it last year either. It's been two years since I've cleaned this uh, engine compartment up. Get warm in here with that thing running, so I turned my uh, fan on blowing over this way, but I think it's uh, warmed up enough. It's been running probably five, eight minutes, maybe ten minutes with the thermostat uh, open and uh, when I drain the oil, I always take the filter off first so the oil pickup tube drains. There's the temperature gauge. All right, I'm gonna shut her down, get the oil filter off, get the oil draining out. Grease up the chassis. By the time I'm done greasing up the chassis, I can put the drain plug back in, put the new filter on, fill it with oil, and we'll crank it up and go for a ride. There it is, that curb idle. Turn the fans off so you can hear. We'll go back to tailpipes, you know. Never do that on this car. I do on the Galaxy. Yeah, it's a lot quieter than the Galaxy, that's for sure. I mean, look at the See the size of the mufflers on this thing. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the resonators kept rusting out. The resonators used to be back here where those straight pieces of pipe right in there are. <laughs> and uh, so it's a little bit more of a rumble at idle than when it had the resonators, but other than that, you don't notice the difference. When I had the resonators, you didn't hear any noise out the tailpipes. Well, the new grease gun worked good. I didn't put this on because that tip's brand new and it stayed uh, stuck on the Zerts with no problem. But when those get worn, they don't stick. These things are awesome. But anyway, I'm sure I'll get people to say, why don't you have a battery grease gun? Well, if I lived on a farm and was greasing equipment all the time away from the air compressor, yeah, that'd be great. But these are the only two things I own with grease fittings. And I change oil and grease them. I do all the maintenance once a year. I grease them sometimes mid-season. But there are, I always do it here. The air compressor is there. So it's just 
I use a pneumatic gun and it you know when you try and use one of those hand jobs you're trying to hold both ends of the gun and it just you know sometimes it's inconvenient when you're laying under a car that's not jacked up or on a hoist so that is why I don't like using those hand pump guns but it's got new oil in it I oiled the oilers on the generator and the distributor checked all the fluids everything's good it's got uh, just conventional oil I put this uh, conventional 1040 and I, I don't use synthetics in it because it'll leak worse because the molecules are smaller that's what I use for the camshaft because I'll probably get asked on that too but anyway there we go it's uh, it's pretty much all set I put uh, 950 miles on it this summer so I didn't hardly drive it normally I put a couple thousand on it but uh you know I could still put another hundred or so miles on it before the season's out I'm sure it's uh still a month of cruising but you know I'll just walk over and get it every now and then and take it out I gotta go in and wash my hands and get the uh mail I got to take to the post office and drop off and I checked the oil before I started it cold I should have videoed it it was right on the full mark so I drove it the whole summer and in the beginning of the summer it was maybe just a little bit above the full mark so it used maybe a half a pint of oil and I think what it what it lost it leaked the oil pan gaskets and the rubber seal at the bottom of the timing cover and at the back where the rear main cap leak the rubber is just probably as hard as a rock and uh so it drips you know a little bit of oil now and then i mean nothing major but uh enough to where i keep cardboard under it so it doesn't you know leave oil drips and plus road draft tubes typically drip too and uh but there we go the Oil has changed, and uh, we'll take a little ride to the post office. Well, my phone started ringing, so I didn't get uh, much video, but we're just heading here to the mailboxes at the post office and then over to the storage unit, so I'm not driving the car very far. All right, I gotta set the camera got down to do it. Well, I'll get the Chevy in here and get the truck out. Yeah, I haven't driven this but once all summer and uh, Hopefully the, the batteries up in it Should be I don't know why it wouldn't be But we'll see all the lights are on the interior lights. So that's always encouraging It's going that quick and easy. This thing always starts like that. I don't drive this thing hardly at all anymore since my dad passed away. I used to use it to go up to Romeo to do the maintenance on the house up there because I was always hauling stuff back and forth and I use it when I go up to the cottage because I'm hauling stuff but around here it's just too hard to park in urban areas so I don't drive it. I want to pull this down enough so I can swing the Chevy in. Alright, let me get the Chevy in. Yeah, I'm not putting on the cover yet or taking the battery out yet. There's, you know, still a month of uh, being able to use the car, so I'm sure I'll be taking it out again. And in the meantime, it can just sit here. It's all packed in here nicely. Put the windows up to keep the interior clean and uh there we go just put it over here and like i say it's just a short walk over here so anytime i want to take it out i can walk over here and get it i just like it at home during the summer I like to be able to look out and see it in the garage and you know play with it and touch it and whatnot so but i can still get it out and drive it just drive the truck a little bit to warm it up bring the battery up to full charge i'll drive it around uh ferndale maybe there we go two fords in the garage now but like i say i can still get the chevy and take it it's just a short walk over there it's no big deal but anyway that is going to be it for this video i'm going to wrap it up here if you like it hit the like button 
you like my channel, please subscribe by hitting that uh, 348 engine icon that pops up, the engine that's in the Bel Air, and thank you for watching my videos.